What's going on traders? Welcome back to Gorilla Futures. My name is Patrick and thank you for watching. Now, by the title of today's video, we're gonna go over a few tips and tricks that I wish I knew when I first started out and might be able to help traders that are maybe just starting out or are maybe struggling a little bit. Now, down below, I will section this video out so you can go back, rewatch these tips and tricks and maybe take notes along the way. Now let's just dive right into our first tip on getting started or improving your trading, and that is starting small. Now, what do we mean when we say start small? Well, there's a few different things, and some of these tips and tricks are gonna kind of bounce off of each other or be related. And the first one, when we say start small, what we really mean is expectations, contract size, and your amount of trading. So there's three different parts there. First one, let's just talk about contract size. Contract size is simply how many contracts are we buying or selling? Some people like to sim trade and they will sim trade hundreds of contracts and then in reality, they don't actually end up trading that much when they go to their live account. So when you're starting out, start with one contract, whether that be one contract on the MES, one contract on the ES, the NASDAQ, whatever kind of floats your boat, just start small. Okay, and then when you do start small, also have small expectations. You know, one of the things we see all the time is everyone has these grand dreams and goals, which I think are awesome. I think you do need to have big goals. Uh, it's something that you should always be working towards. And I think having big goals and things like that are great because you're constantly trying to improve and get better so you can meet those goals. But to get to those big goals, set small goals along the way, you know? You're not gonna go from knowing nothing about trading to a millionaire living that Lambo lifestyle within a month or two, but maybe if you set that goal for a year or two years, you might be able to achieve that. So start small, have small goals. Maybe your first goal is to just be able to trade for the first month, you know? Maybe your first goal is to trade consistently or maybe have a 60% win-loss ratio or something like that. But regardless, whatever your goals are, just start small. So in kind of summary for rule number one or tip number one, I should say, is start small. And that applies to everything you do. That applies to when you're looking at which equipment you should buy, start small. You know, you don't need to go and spend a ton of money. Use what you have. Maybe you're viewing this on your computer right now. Maybe you're viewing this on your phone right now. Regardless, use the resources that you have right now, start with those, and then add on. So number one, start small. That is a very blanket statement, but it applies to every aspect of trading, whether it be your sim trading, your live trading, purchasing equipment, you know, goals and expectations. Start small and then add on to that. Now that brings us to tip number two, and this is a bit of a two-part tip. First part is gonna be our rules. Second part is going to be our plan. And they kind of go hand in hand. You can do one before the other, but regardless, you're gonna to need to do both. So I'm a big, big fan of setting rules. Here off screen, I have an entire binder right here that is dedicated to all my rules, my trading plan. Everything is in here. There's lots of examples. And this is something that constantly gets updated. Now, when I say constantly gets updated, I'm always trying to improve my set of rules. So you're seeing there, if we go through that page by page, I scribble notes, I talk about improvements. Hey, Patrick, you can do this better in the future. You can maybe improve here, add this, stop doing this, or just general notes that I see while I'm trading because I'm always trying to improve. One of the things that I do see from new traders and experienced traders is they create a set of rules and then they don't change it. It's okay to admit when something's not working or when something can be better. Now, the whole idea of your rules is it's essentially a part of your business plan. Now, trading is a business. Even if you are a retail trader, you are creating a business. Now, if you were going into business, say, selling t-shirts, you would have a plan to know which t-shirts you're selling, how much they cost, what you're willing to risk, on those t-shirts, who you're selling those t-shirts, how you're tell, selling those t-shirts, and you'd have a detailed business plan. Now your rules should be set up as a business plan as well. When I create my rules, I essentially create them in one, the third person, and two, I'm always talking 
threw out my rules about if I was telling somebody else my rules. So what that means is I like to one, make sure my rules and trading plan is very, very simple. Uh, the whole idea here is I wanna be able to explain my set of rules and my trading plan to an elementary student. So if you're in fifth grade or something, I wanna be able to say, hey, this is how I trade and it makes sense to them. Why? There's a few different reasons. One, I think simple's better. If you've gone through the price action course, you know we use the KISS method throughout the course. Keep it super simple and that applies to our rules as well. The second is when I'm in the midst of trading, I don't wanna have to read tons and tons of detailed, well, one, I do want it to be detailed, but I don't want it to be confusing. I don't want it to be hard to read. I wanna be able to just simply flip open to it and say, okay, that's what I need to be doing right now and it clicks right away. So one, I think simple is very easy. And two, if we're being honest, we're all human. If we make something too complicated, then we probably aren't going to do it. So make your rules very, very simple. Now to the second part of that is developing a plan. Now again, we can break this into a few different parts. I think your plan should have a set of goals. You can either include that in your trading rules or maybe include that in your journal or have a separate document for your trading plan. Again, there's no right or wrong way to trade, just whatever works best for you. So when it comes to your trading plan, again, set it up like a business plan. When are you gonna trade? Where are you gonna trade? How are you gonna trade? What are your goals to trade? And personally, when I set up my trading plan and rules, it always starts the night before. So that means how much sleep am I gonna get the night before? Because we all know if we don't get enough sleep, then we wake up cranky, we're not gonna function well, we're not gonna trade well, and trading is very much a mental game. So if our mental state is maybe tired, we're groggy, maybe you're hungover or something, then there's a good chance you might not trade very well. So start your trading plan the night before. So in summary of tip number two, which is a little bit of a two-parter, is set up your rules, make sure they are easy to read, easy to follow, and they are readily available. I personally like to print mine out. Some people like to write theirs down. Again, there's no right or wrong way. Just make sure that you have a set of rules that you can glance to and reference whenever you need to. So that, makes, that means that they need to be readily available. Again, these sit next to me pretty much 24 seven whenever I'm trading. That way I can flip them open, super easy to get to. Next part of that is your trading plan and goals. So set up a plan, how are you gonna reach those goals? Again, if your goal is to be consistent, first of all, make sure you describe what is consistency in your eyes. For some people it is winning trades, for other people it is just spending a half an hour in front of the charts every day. Again, there's no right or wrong uh, way to go about this, but make sure your goals and trading plan is spelled out, it's easy to see, and you have a plan on how you're going to achieve those. Because if you don't have a plan and you simply just write it down, then all it is is a dream, and unfortunately dreams aren't gonna cash checks for you. So make sure you have your rules and your trading plan all set up. Now that brings us to tip number three. And tip number three is gonna bounce off of some of our other tips we're gonna talk about here in a minute, but that one is risk management. Now risk management, again, there's no right or wrong way. You just need to have some sort of risk management plan and it should be in your rules like I stated with tip number two. Now first off, let's kind of take a step back. What is risk management? Well, risk management is simply how much are you going to risk? So for example, if you were starting your t-shirt company, how much are you going to risk of your own capital to get that business going? In trading, it's exactly the same. Personally, I have a little bit of a different approach to risk management. Some people are gonna agree with it and some people are gonna disagree with it. Again, there's no right or wrong way to trade, but I personally like to have a minimum of a one-to-one -one risk, risk reward ratio. So what that means is if I'm looking to gain $10, then I'm looking to lose $10. So that is one-to-one -one. out there, Lots of people talk about the one to three, one to four, one to five, and I think that is a great theory to have, but lots of times in day trading, and not every time, those big moves just don't happen throughout the day. So sometimes we have to settle for that smaller reward. Now, I'm not gonna turn down $100 just because I wanna make 
$400. And that is kind of where some people agree with me and some people are going to disagree with me. Again, there's no right or wrong way to trade. Or I should correct that and say the only wrong way to trade is to not have a risk management plan. So make sure that's detailed. Make sure you agree with it. And then make sure you implement that. Some people who are more maybe swing traders or investing type traders are going to look at a larger risk reward. Maybe you're going to use a percentage of your account. Some people use 1%, some people use 3%. I personally uh, wouldn't want to go over 5% of my uh, entire trading account and I wouldn't want to risk that on any one trade. So again, there's a few different ways that you can go about this. Just make sure that you do have a risk management plan and it's something that you will actually follow. Because again, you can have a risk management plan, but if you're not going to follow it, then it's not doing you any good. So make sure that you do have a good risk management plan. You understand that risk management plan and it's something that you have detailed and you can reference whenever uh, you're kind of in the heat of the moment when it comes to trading. Now our fourth rule is, or I should say tip, is going to be back test. Now, number four and number five are going to be interchangeable. Uh, some people will like to do one before the other. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just make sure that you're doing this at some period. And that is back testing. Now, what do we mean when we say back testing? Well, we simply take our plan, our set of rules, and we go apply it to a previous set of data. Some people will like to go back and look at a month's worth of data. I personally like to look at six plus months worth of data when I backtest. And there's tons of different ways that you can backtest. Now, behind me, you see my NinjaTrader screens and my charts. There's a few different ways you can backtest with them. One, if you have an automated system, you can use their automated tools to do that. Two, you can simply go back and just look at previous charts, follow your rules, and mark them up by hand. I personally think that is probably one of the best ways and probably should be the first step. That's personally what I do. When I want to implement something new or I have a new idea, I simply just go back and see how that idea potentially fared in the past. And then the third is to sim trade or to replay that data as well. Now I think this can be a very good tool or it can be a very bad tool and we're going to talk more about that uh, on our next tip but you can simply select a period of time and go back and replay that data. Now, I do have a little bit of a disclaimer when it comes to that. If you're going to replay any information or data, I strongly make sure you haven't gone back and looked at it before. Now, what I mean by that is you don't wanna look at a bunch of data, kinda of study it, and then try to go and replay something because your mind already knows what's gonna happen. If you know there's gonna be a 300 point sell off, then you might not take that long trade where you would have if you didn't know this was gonna happen. So make sure you're being honest with yourself because if you're not gonna be honest with your information and your trading, then all you're doing is hurting yourself in the long run. So that is back testing. Make sure that you back test any system before you put it into any live market conditions or before you risk any money because you're not going to just waste your money. You don't want to throw your money away. And back testing is one of the best ways to do that. Now, a few more tips on back testing. I personally like to test my new system or new idea in many different market conditions. So that means I want to go back and look at slow days where maybe we were stuck in a range between 15 and 20 points, trending days where price is just moving up extremely fast and trending days where price is moving down extremely fast. So we want to look at bullish trends, bearish trends, range, news events, go back, compile that data, make sure you're journaling it, writing it down somewhere, keeping track of it. And then you know what you can change and what needs uh, to be improved on. Now, maybe you get lucky and you don't have to make any changes or improvements, but I will be honest and tell you that that is very rare. So when you go back to back test, make sure you have an open mind. It's okay if you go back to back test something and you have to make a bunch of improvements. That's why you're back testing. This is kind of your pre-run before you start to trade this. So in summary, make sure you back test, make sure you back test an adequate amount of data. You don't want to be back testing off of just one or two days. You wouldn't build an entire business 
off of just a little bit of information, would you? I would hope not. And the same applies to trading. So get as much information as you can. Take your time. There's no reason or there's nothing that says, hey, you have to get this done ASAP. Everyone wants to start making money and that's fine. I understand that. That's why you got into trading. That's why I got into trading. We all want to make money. But if you rush these important steps, all you're doing is setting yourself up for failure. So number four is back testing. That brings us to our fifth tip and that is sim trade. And again, this is going to be another tip that some people agree with me and some people disagree with me, but we want to get some experience. And I personally think sim trading can, let me put that in very big air quotes, can be a very good tool or it can be your worst enemy. Now, let me explain. First of all, what is sim trading? Sim trading stands for simulated trading. Uh, lots of times, like for an example, if you're using Ninja Trader, they set you up with, I believe, a hundred thousand dollar sim account, which I am not the biggest fan of. And you can sim trade or paper trade their account and test your rules. Now, a few tips on sim trading. First of all, I would strongly recommend that whatever size account you plan on trading live, you trade about 70 to 80 percent of that account in sim trade. So for an example, let's say you're going to put $1,000 in your live account and that's what you're going to trade with. Well, when you sim trade, you should look at trading a seven or $800 account. The idea behind this is we want to start to try to get those emotions there. You know, there's going to be some emotions that aren't uh, able to be replicated in sim trading that are, that you are going to see in live trading and that's okay. But, First, we want to try to get as close as possible to that live experience as we can. Next up is contract size and rules. So first of all, if you plan on trading one contract when you go live, you better be trading one contract when you're in SIM. I see this all the time. These people will trade 40, 50 contracts in SIM and then they go to live and they only trade one contract. Why aren't you practicing how you planning on, on playing? It just doesn't make any sense. So again, that takes us back to our first rule, start small. So start small in your SIM trading and then work your way up. Personally, when it comes to SIM trading, it can be your greatest, greatest tool, or it can be your worst enemy. If you don't take it seriously, if you don't apply all your rules that we just talked about to sim trading, then you're not going to get anything out of it and you're simply wasting your time. So make sure with your sim trading, you take it seriously. And next up is I personally believe everyone should have, if they can take it seriously, a period of time sim trading. Some people that's a month, some people that's six months. Regardless, set some small goals, achieve those in SIM, and then see if you can apply those goals and what you learned into your live trading. That's personally how I like to do it. When I implement something new, I'll test it out on SIM for a little bit, and then I will go and apply it to live trading. I personally, like I've said multiple times, I think SIM can be your greatest, greatest tool or your worst enemy. It all depends on how you uh, apply it and use it. Next up is experience. And we kind of talked about this, but once you achieve those goals in SIM, then go and take them to live trading. And again, you want to start small. You know, maybe you run into a bunch of hiccups with live trading. Well, you can simply go back to SIM, fix it, work out any kinks, back test it, and then start the process over. And unfortunately, you might have to do that a few times. And the reason being is trading's hard. You know, like I said, you're not going to get all those emotions. Uh, that you had live trading and sim trading. So you might have to go back and forth a few times. Don't get discouraged. It's okay. Look at it as a learning experience in a way that you can get better. So number five is experience in sim trade. Set some goals, achieve those goals in sim, and then see if you can apply that to your live trading. Now, number six is going to be find a community, education, and a mentor if you possibly can. Now at Gorilla Futures, we have our price action course and our coaching package that you are more than welcome to take advantage of. And we have a ton of free options as well on our website from our free ebook to our free course that will hopefully help some new and experienced traders out. But what I really mean by find a mentor in education is find something that really resonates with you. 
Personally, I like price action. I'm a huge fan of price action. And like I said in the beginning, that's mainly due to the fact because I'm a very visual person. I like to see those candle setups and that just works with me. So find something that resonates with you and then see if you can possibly duplicate it. Don't kind of do it backwards and say, oh, that person just gained $10,000 on this one trade. I want to follow them. Don't get me wrong. We all want to make $10,000 on a trade. But remember, you want to find something that you can consistently do that makes sense to you. So look into it, research it, read about price action, take advantage of some of our free options or somebody else's free options, but make sure you really kind of understand and grasp what they're talking about and how they're trading. Because if you're simply copying results, then you're not really helping yourself out. So number six, it's kind of a three-parter. Find a mentor, whether that be online, in person, find a good community. We have a big community here. We have our Discord channel where we help lots of people out. Lots of our members help each other out and it's back and forth and that's how I think it, I think it really should be, community helping each other. And then last, find some quality education that really resonates with you. Not just quality results, but quality res education that really makes sense to you and it's something that you believe in. So this video has been a little bit longer. Don't forget, like I said, there are sections down below where you can go back and forth. But I just want to run through these six steps real quick or six tips. Number one, start small. Whether that be your contract size, your goals, whatever it is, start small. Number two, develop a plan and a set of rules. Remember, it's like a business plan. You want to make these rules easy to view, readily available, and keep them next to you at all times. Number three is going to be risk management. How much are you willing to lose on your trade? What is going to be your risk reward? That brings us to number four is back test. Make sure you back test that risk reward. Make sure you back test your rules, your system, your ideas, and make sure you do that for a period of time and with multiple different market types bearish, bullish, ranging, news, whatever it is, make sure it can work all the time. You don't want a system that only works for longs, only works for shorts, only works when the Fed's speaking, and so on. Number five. Number five is experience and sim trade. First, I'd recommend starting off with sim only if you can take it seriously. If you can't take it seriously, then you might want to consider jumping right into live trading and starting with one contract, whether it be with a micro, a mini, but again, start small. Take that experience you learned from Sim, and then hopefully it's something that you can replicate and apply to your live trading. Now, number six is find a mentor, find a community, find quality education that really makes sense to you. Remember, don't just chase results. We all want big results, but we also wanna make sure that how we plan on trading really resonates with us. And then lastly, ask questions. Take advantage of free resources. Like I said, we have tons of free resources on our site. We have thousands of hours of YouTube videos on our channel for free. Take advantage of those. Now, if you do want to take advantage of some of our paid options, our price action course, our coaching, and see what everything comes with that, there'll be a link top right-hand corner. Click that link, reach out to us, let us know what's going on, and then hopefully you can get some help and then start to progress how you would want to. Now, as always, I wanna thank you for watching this video. This has been a longer video. If it's something that you like and you do like this format, please let us know. Comment down below, hit that like button. That really lets us know what type of videos you like, what videos you wanna see. And if you ever have any suggestions for videos, feel free to drop them down below or shoot us an email. So as always, good luck. If you have any questions, if there's anything we can do for you, don't be afraid to reach out. And as always, good luck on your trading.